Okay, in terms of a little bit of physics, uh, some important terms are torque. Okay, it's one of the basic things that make the robot move. Okay, is torque. Uh, torque is right here, and everyone knows what F is, right? Force. Force. What's D? Resistance. Okay, so my arm is a robot arm. So what would I measure to figure out the uh, torque? The distance of the radius. Is this from here to where? That's where usually people make mistakes. Okay, so actually where the load is, or my arm is the load, okay, it's the center of mass of the load. So it's not to my fingertips, it's to the middle. Okay, when you do the math. Okay, and it's very similar to work, except for here we have rotation. Okay, in part. We can rotate, it's like motors are rotating, or arms are going up and down. Okay? So it's just going forward and that's going to be work. Most people in middle school don't understand work. Okay. Okay, these are a bunch of formulas again. I'm not going to spend all day talking about them. Okay, but the truth of the matter is not just force times distance, it's the sign of the angle. So where is the torque the greatest? Down here? Okay, perpendicular? Up here? Straight up here. Where's the torque the greatest? Okay, so when you're trying to figure out whether or not your motors can compensate for the torque, okay, you actually calculate beforehand. Okay, then that's important. Okay, to understand that. So you could do this via time. Okay. Thank you. Oh, there it goes. Thank you. There's also a, uh, a torque power curve. Okay, the ideal RPM for your motor okay, is somewhere in the middle. Okay, of the torque power curve. Okay, power is just the uh, work or the torque divided by the time that it takes. And we have motors. Okay, if you ever taken a motor apart. Okay, you can unscrew them and look at them if you like. I know I've had some broken ones, which I've done that. Uh, normally, just so you know, I, I usually have, at, at the uh, first center, we have around 15, 20 different robots that are out. And I usually show these things, but it's, it's kind of hard to bring it from Michigan. Here. So we'll just use pictures. Okay, so this is a, uh, these are wires that are going round and round and round and round and round. Okay, 
And what happens is when you have electricity going through wire, what do you create? Okay, well, there's current, of course. There's something else. Magnetic field, right, we have a magnetic field. Okay, so the uh, magnetic field is then, it's gonna interact with the north and the south, and of course, north will repel north, and, and south will, will attract north, and so it'll cause motion. But it'll really only go halfway, okay, to adjust itself. Then you switch the poles, plus and minus, okay, or north and south, depending on which way you wanna do it, and then it keeps on going. The inertia keeps the motor going round and round. So that's how your motors work. Okay, again, I'm just very, being very brief on this. Okay, gears and sprockets and belts. Okay, many of you guys use all three, and some of you guys just use, prefer one or the other. Okay, the kit bots nowadays are using belts. Okay, we always use sprockets and uh, chain initially. That's what they used to put in the kit, kit bots. Uh, there's different kinds of chain, 25 chain and 35 chain. That's point. 0.25 inches and 0.35 inches. So it's, it's the thickness of it, okay? Uh, 25 chain is really nice, it's lighter, okay? And why do we want it to be white, light? Because we have a, right, we have a 120 pound weight limit. Okay, this game wasn't as bad, but some people are trying to do everything, that's still a struggle. Okay, so if you're having a weight issue, 25 chain, if it's strong enough, will, may be a better choice. Okay, 35 chain, uh, is a little bit stronger. So last year in, res in the uh, oh, stronghold, when you had to go over all those barriers, uh, a lot of teams switched from 25 chain, because that's what they're used to, to 35 chains, because it kept on pulling apart. Okay, uh, belts uh, can be very, very useful. Uh, they sometimes will slip, so you need something, some kind of slot or something to tension them, or some kind of tensioner, okay, which is also true with chain. Okay, you need to be able to tension them, because they will stretch out. You have to affect that. Any, any comments or questions? Okay. Now, gear sprocket ratio, uh, this year for the climb, that was very important. Okay, I'm uh, just curious, how, uh, what kind of gear ratio did your team, do you guys know any gear ratios for your team that you have for climbing? 21. Okay, what kind of motor did you use? Single sim, okay. So it depends on the weight of your uh, robot, okay. Uh, what was your weight? 104. So that was enough to, uh, to pick up the robot. And the other issues which some people found is when they were going up the side, if they were getting friction going up the side, sometimes it wouldn't go all the way up. It would start, and as the rope gets, or gets farther and far, farther around, okay, the uh, the uh, torque will be actually become less, okay? Speed will go faster. Okay, so there's the uh, math involved in that. Uh, just as if you have 10 gears or, or 10 sprockets on a motor and you go to 20, okay, what would the gear ratio be? Okay, you've got your, okay, one to two, okay? So what does that really mean? Okay, do I go faster or slower? Okay, if it's 10 going to 20, it's gonna slow it down, but it's gonna be stronger. Okay, twice as strong. Okay. So gear ratios are something which a lot of the engineers and people always go through. Okay, and this is just a very quick thing on drivetrain. Okay, I, this is not really what this is about. Okay, but there are four traction wheels, four wheels, traction omnis, four, you know, every team does things a little bit differently. The probably the most common one is the six traction wheels with a drop, either three eighths or one quarter inch drop in the middle. Just wanted to mention that. Uh, manipulators for first. Okay. I'm going to go through some of the uh, history involved in it. Okay, we've had quite a few different kinds of things to manipulate. Okay, in lunacy. Okay, we had this little this ball. I forgot, it's around 10 inches, and it squished quite a bit. It was a webbed one. And aerial assault, we got this huge ball to try to pick up. And locomotion, we had these uh, inner tubes, okay, a different shape inner tubes for the 20th anniversary. 
Uh, ultimate step, we had frisbees. We've had soccer balls. We've had regular balls. We've had basketballs. Uh, regular inner tubes. So you never know what they're going to choose, but the ball, like this year, okay, is a very common theme. Okay, what was one of the problems with the ball they used this year? Okay, why, why aren't people getting 100% shooting? I mean, if you design it right, it should get everyone in. <laughs> yes. They squish. Okay, that's one of the big, big problems. Yes. Okay, in other words, you could hit a hole straight on or it could be a little bit off. So you have a lot of inconsistency. So what have people done to make it so you at least get some points out of it? Shoot a lot of balls <laughs> and very fast. Okay, so you know there there are ways to over overcome the actual physical problems. Okay, and some some of it's just trial and error where you try some things out, you try different surfaces uh, for the wheels. There, if you're using a wheel to uh, shoot it with, like a lot of people are. Okay, do you want a really skinny wheel or you want a little bit fatter? A little bit fatter so you get a little more surface area on it. Okay, at least the ones I've seen they've been fairly successful. Okay, and sometimes how hard it is. If it's really hard, it may not, you know, come in contact with the ball as well. So if you make it a little squishier on the material, it may come in contact with more of the ball so it can propel it better and a little bit more consistently. Okay, we've, had, we've done things like stacking. This is Recycle Rush, which some of you may have seen before. Okay, we, we took the totes and we stacked them on top of that, and we put a garbage can, and then we put a noodle on top of that. Uh, the team I was with that year was able to do six of them and fairly consistently. It was kind of a little bit of a boring game because you got really good at doing something, but then you kept on doing the same thing over and over and over. Okay. And last year we had Stronghold, which we did some climbing also. Okay. And you had to grab the bar and lift your robot up above the, uh, the uh, window or the doorway. Okay. Uh, again, there's a shooter for a ball for last, from last year, 33 Killer Bees, it did very well. Uh, this is the uh, Martians, a lot of these teams are going to St. Louis instead of Houston. Uh, there's Rush, who's done very well. So there's different ways, sometimes people picked up things by putting it on top in front of the robot and, and bringing them in. Okay, here you have some belts that are moving the rollers. Any questions so far? And the next question is how, what, how to manip manipulate something. Game objects change every year. Okay, so you can see someone took a uh, arm, took it from the ground, and brought it up, and then pushed it in. Okay. If I had to make a guess, you know, the last two years we really haven't had to use arms very much, except for maybe to lift up last year. Okay, I would not doubt if we have to pick and place something for next year. Okay, uh, if we've had small robots, maybe hopefully it's time for some larger robots. Okay, so some things you have to do, you have to lift things, you have to dump things, you have to may, may want to dump a bunch of balls this year into the uh, low goal, I haven't seen that a lot, because it wasn't worth a lot. Uh, you have to kick things, gather things, bring them into your robot through here, uh, throw things, shoot things, and fling things like frisbees. Okay, so now things that manipulate. This is kind of a, when you're doing your strategy for the beginning of the year, some things you sh should consider. Okay, first of all, know the objects. Test the game piece. So you, you take, take your ball your, and try it out and notice that it does squish, uh, does have holes in it. Uh, test the game pieces. Read the game and robot rules. What can you actually do with these things? Are you allowed to have only three of them, or can you have ten of them, or can you have as many as you put in your robot, which is this year? Okay. Uh, define your your game strategy. In other words, are you really going to deal with these balls that are hard to shoot? 
okay, or do you find that you get more points for gears and climbing? That's what your focus is, and maybe I'll just make a smaller shooter for you doing autonomous since you get three times more points. Okay, so, you know, or you just want to be, you just love shooting balls, so you fill up your ball, your hopper with balls, and that's going to be your main. We, there's a team in, in Michigan, uh, engineers, who can only do th three gears and climb, so they, they made their, their hopper, so they, they score, you know, 30, 40 in, in autonomous. Okay, so that's what their, their goal was, to shoot. Uh, learn from others. Okay, look online. Go to Chief Delphi or other sources, okay, which have a lot of interaction, okay, with other teams. Uh, if you know other people in other teams, one, th one thing nice about FIRST is they, it's kind of a community where you can talk to other people. Uh, wh when I wanted to make a presentation, I went online and looked to see what was already out there, and Bruce Whitefield from Washington, <laughs> okay, I'm from Michigan, but he was from Washington, had a very good one, and I asked him if it was okay if I could use some of it. Okay, and so w then I added my own thing out. So collaboration is really helpful. Okay, talking to other teams, and talking to other people. Okay, learn from others, look online, talk to mentors, visit other teams. That's what I basically just said. Consider your capabilities. Okay, well, do you have a full machine shop with lathe and mill, CNC, uh, f or do you just have a, 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 you know, a band saw and a drill? Okay, which some teams, that's all they have. Okay, so, you know, you've got to consider what you have to work with. Uh, materials, your manpower, do you only have one machinist, uh, or do you have 15? Uh, can you send your stuff out to a company and have it done? Okay, I mean, it depends on your, what you're able to do. Uh, I've been parts of all those kinds of teams. Okay, I've, I've been, my first team was 397, and we, we did have a mill and a lathe that was donated from Delphi, and and we were able to do it ourselves, uh, pretty much everything. Uh, I was part of 65, which was, we built our robot at GM Powertrain, okay? They gave the parts, you know, we told them what we wanted, and they gave it back to us. <laughs> I mean, we weren't allowed to use the machines, okay? We put all stuff together, but that's, you know, every, every team is different in terms of what the resources are. Okay, the budget, how much it costs, are you gonna make one robot, are you gonna make two robots? Uh, you know, it's what you have the budget for and the time. Take some time management there. Any, any comments or questions on some of these ideas? Okay. Okay, some recurring themes. <laughs> Things that have done in the past. Lifting high, long reach. Articulating arms that go up and down. Parallel arms, that's usually your four bar or your six bar. Uh, telescoping, okay, using an elevator or something that telescopes. Uh, grabbers, grippers, rollers, claws. Okay, I'll go through some of these in more detail here. Uh, collecting conveyors, turrets, shooters, kickers, uh, buckets and scoops. Uh, power and control, winches, brakes. We, a lot of people are using winches right now. Okay. Brakes, latches, pneumatics, springs and bungees, gears and sprockets. These are all things which we may not have time to go through everything. Okay, we'll do what we can. This is really more of an hour and a half, but we had an hour. Okay, arms. Okay, we have a shoulder, you have an elbow, and we have a wrist. Eh, why not call it like a person? Okay, that's what people relate to. Okay, so... Torque and weight. Uh, so here's the uh, load at the end. So the torque will be from point of attachment to the point of rotation. Okay, so you know what that, that force is, and which is basically gravity, mg. And then you, you know what the, uh, what the distance is. You measure the distance. But you also have to worry about the torque of the arm itself. So you find the halfway distance and the mass of the actual arm. Then add them up. Okay. Now, something if you if your motor can't handle the load, what are some things you can do? Okay, a little picture. Where where is something that's going to help you? Okay, instead of just putting a motor here. Okay, what do you think this represents? 
a spring, a, a, a surgical tubing, a bungee, something. So if you have something here, you pull down here, that's going to cause this to go up. Okay, so not only does your motor lift it up, but the, uh, this cord can go up. And when it wants to go down, well, the weight of the arm is going to help it go down anyways. Okay, so that's not as hard. Okay, arm design tips. Okay, things which hopefully most of you guys know, but let's go through them. Okay, lightweight materials. The material you use can be very important. Do you use quarter, you know, eighth inch uh, aluminum stock, or do you use sixteenth of an inch? Uh, depends on, on whether or not you, you have a chance of breaking your arm and how much load you need. So you want it strong enough, and yet you want it light. So our, our predominant material we use is aluminum, since the density is 2.7 versus, I think, iron or steel is around 7.8. Okay. So another thing you can do besides for thin thin wall tubes are lightning holes. Now that's not, you know, lightning. Okay, what does lightning holes mean? Okay, I, I've seen some around here. Okay, put some holes in it. <laughs> Drill a hole in it, and that gets rid of some of your weight. You've got to be careful because you lose structure too. Okay, so you don't want it to break. Okay. So that's something you have to try out. Uh, to see the, the strength of it, hopefully early. Okay, using sensors uh, for feedback and control for your arms. Okay, what are some sensors you can use? Okay, we have limit switches, which basically it gets to a certain point, uh, you stop. Okay, it's like a light switch. Okay, you have a potentiometer, which will help you measure the angle. I want to bring it right here where I score, and this tells me it's at, you know, 45 degrees, wherever you want to put where it's supposed to go, and the code will allow you to stop it. So programmers love to use sensors, okay, because it helps them. Helps them find about the environment around them. Uh, encoders, okay, you have different kinds of encoders that will allow you to know how many rotations you have. Okay, so similar to a potentiometer, okay, you, you can sometimes interchange them. Uh, you have banner light sensors, where let's say I want, I've acquired my ball. Well, I'm not sure if I've really acquired exactly where I want it to. You put a light sensor, okay, at the point, and at a point where it's at the edge of the ball, and when it gets to that edge, then you know that ball is in the right place. Okay, once it crosses, it breaks the light. Okay, you have cameras. Okay, a lot of people are using cameras nowadays, using grip and other kinds of. Uh, ways of determining, you know, where things are. They have reflective tape, light shines, these bright green lights or whatever color lights you use, red, and it bounces back and you can figure out how far you are. Uh, you can use a gyro in case you get offline, it puts you back. Uh, ultrasonic is not used as much, but I know a team that's using it right now and that tells you what the, di basically a, a sound wave hits the wall and you can figure out the distance on that. It's used more for Lego. But I know someone's using that for uh, this year's game. Uh, use linkages and contr to control long arms. Okay, uh, four bar linkage is a nice linkage to use. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, use counterbalances, springs, weights, pneumatic bungees, uh, things to counterbalance. Uh, calculate the forces. Watch out for center of gravity because what will happen if your center of gravity is, uh, gets overextended? Okay, you might tip over. So you try to keep your weight low. A lot of people have 10 pounds extra and say, oh, I'm gonna put some steel near my wheels. Get a little more traction and keep my center of gravity low. Uh, and keep it, keep it as simple as possible. Some people say, you know, the KISS idea. Well, sometimes you can't keep it simple. Okay, some, but you wanna keep it as simple as possible and still make it work, okay? An example of that, uh, one of our teams has, has a, uh, an autonomous ball shooter, shoots the 10 balls, okay? Well, they, want, they don't want the ball to be, you know, they want the motor to speed up to speed in the very beginning during Thomas, so they could either put a, oh, something active to make it so that it pushes it, 
Uh, they have a way to the ball moves forward. They've got a wheel to move the balls forward, but they don't want to touch the wheel right away. So they actually took tape, okay, and they taped it to their to their uh, robot so that ball would not touch the wheel, and then the wheel would start to push everything forward and break the tape. So it was a simple thing that could be used passively, okay, without adding something more complicated. Okay, these are actually uh, some information which, if you want to do an elevator, okay, you can use rack and pinion. You have a gear and a, uh, got your pinion gear, some speed with a applied torque. So basically you have a motor that's going to move it up. Okay, so it goes up and down. Okay, you, uh, you can have a sprocket and chain or a belt. And here's where you're going to be lifting up, okay, whatever object you need to lift up. And it goes straight up. Okay, what's one of the problems with an arm that's trying to lift something? So if I'm trying to lift this, okay, does this go straight up? No, it makes an arc. Okay, so one of the problems with lifting objects is the arc. So with an elevator, it just goes straight up. But there are other ways of doing that, too. We'll get into Okay, all right, we'll skip that. Okay, telescoping lifts. Okay, extension lifts, motion achieved by stacking members sliding on each other. Okay, anyone know what this is called? Scissors lift, it's the uh, one they tell you never to use. <laughs> okay, it's really nice when it works. Okay, last year some people were using it to lift their robots up and they were able to do a good job with it. But the problem is you better be very good on your, your measurements. Because if you're off in your measurements, everything binds up, and it's, it's really hard to do it correctly. Okay, so it's not one that, it's one that you need to, you know, try out before or have experience with. Okay, but one thing nice is the package is really low, and then it goes really high. Okay, but it also goes side to side a lot, too. Okay. Uh, extension lifts. Okay, this is actually can be very useful because there's different ways of doing it. Okay, you can use a rope, you can use a chain, uh, you can use a, a cable, and you can follow the pattern, and then the thing will lift straight up as an extension. Or you can do a cascade one where it's attached and it has it cascading up. Is anybody here using any of these? Before, okay. There's a team, okay. So they're 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 fairly compact. Uh, you do have some problems with them. Uh, again, you they'll bind once in a while if you don't do them right. Okay, you can have stage one, stage two. I'm gonna go through this a little faster. How much time do we have left? Okay, 35 minutes. Okay, you have continuous. Okay, where it goes, it's basically one, one pathway going up. And continuous internal. That's a little more uh, complicated for the routing system. Any questions? Okay, extension lift designs. Okay, you use cable to drive up and down, okay, to add and return springs. Okay, uh, so sometimes you want it to go up and then you want it to go down, and sometimes you, you do it so that you power both. I'm letting gravity do it, which my, my team, one of my teams tried to do uh, for Recycle Rush. Didn't really work that well, okay. Uh, they, they decided to power it down as, as well as up. Okay, parallel arms, uh, next one. Okay, four bar linkage. Okay, now there's attachments here on your, basically on your backbone, attachments on the, your manipulator. And it's basically a parallelogram when you have a parallelogram. So instead of going like this, it goes straight up for a while, then eventually it will curve. Okay, so four bars have been used by many world championship teams for lifting heavy objects uh, a distance. OK, 
Okay, it's fairly strong. Okay, I could do that. But it does have weight involved in it. Okay. Now, arms versus lifts. Okay, some features. Okay, for a uh, arm, okay, does it reach over objects? Well, yes, I can reach over something and put something there with an arm. Okay, lifts. Well, I'm just going straight up. It's kind of hard to reach over. Sometimes your robot will, you go up, then your robot goes forward. So that's one way of attaining reach. Uh, getting up after tipping, so you tip over. Okay, if you have an arm, you might be able to push the arm down, and that may re, re put yourself back up. Okay, uh, lifts, no. Uh, complexity, arms are fairly simple. They have mod moderate complexity. It's probably one of the easier things, though. And lifts are a little, to get the routing and making sure everything doesn't bind, it's a little more complicated. Uh, weight capacity, arms moderate, lifts are a little higher because you have a lot of men members to go up. Okay, but it depends on the arm, too. Okay, uh, go under barriers, uh, arms can fold up, and lifts uh, depend. Unfortunately, you need a, a backbone to make things to build off of, so you can only go so far on that. Okay, center of gravity, uh, cantilever uh, for an arm. Okay, it changes, basically, uh, as it goes up and down. And the center of mass for the uh, lifts. Okay, operating space, uh, you have a large swing space, so if you have a lot of room, they're fine. Okay, where the lift is more compact. Uh, adding reach, uh, more articulations, and more sections for lifts. Okay, so you could have a six bar. Does anyone know what a six bar lift is? Not many people use them. Okay, unless you use, you know, an FTC, they do. Okay, basically it's, it's two four bars uh, that are connected to each other. Okay, so you got two there and then two there. And it makes it so that you can get a little higher with the amount of uh, space you have. Uh, in combinations, arm and extenders, lift arms on top. You can use both of them together if you want to. Okay, similar to this. Okay, where you have an elevator and then you have something to reach with. And again, if anyone has a comment to make, feel free to raise your hand. Okay, getting a grip. Okay, next thing. How do you actually grab the object? It may be slippery, okay? Or it may be really tacky and, and it, it grabs too much, so you get uh, ball jams like this year. Even though these balls are pretty slippery, uh, we, we, at Kettering we do a robot in three days and basically 18 hour days, to, we did it in 2.5 days actually. And we, we did it and the balls, we put into, we, we hopped them up and they put them in a container and the balls did not want to, all of them go in the same place. They, they jam and they, the friction between the balls made it so they would not move into our shooter, our, our manipulator to bring it to the shooter. Okay, so we had to readjust it and put some longer tentacles to move the balls better, more. Okay, so, you know, a grip is, can be very important, either more grip or less grip. Okay, getting up, okay, some design concerns, getting objects into grip, hanging on, speed up grip and release, position control, weight and power sources. Uh, you have pneumatic claws with more than one axis, uh, motorized claws, rollers, okay, hoop grips, suctions. Uh, I think the most common one and probably the most useful one, I think, is probably the roller, okay? Uh, a lot of people are using rollers to bring things, to move things. It's very fast, which is one thing nice about it. Okay, pneumatics, if it's just one object, is, can be very useful. Okay, but if you're doing multiple objects, like t this year, you know, some kind of rolling system helps. Claws, okay, they're pneumatics. Uh, one fixed arm. Okay, hollow claws to reduce weight and one or two moving sides. Okay, so a claw you're trying to just grab around like a hand. Yeah, if you guys have matches, go. You know it's going to happen. 
Okay, pneumatics. Okay, two and three point uh, clamps. So you can use three fingers basically to clamp it. Uh, motorized clamps. So it could be not pneumatic, it could be uh, using motors. Okay, it's, it's not, it's a little bit slower and it's not good for frequent grabs. Uh, it depends on how you design it. Uh, it's okay for a few grabs per games for he or he heavy objects. Uh, more complex and heavier uh, due to gearing and motors. Okay, and one thing nice about pneumatics is once you've taken into account your, uh, your compressor weight, okay, you use it for more than one thing, pneumatics is, are very useful. Okay. Suction grips, okay, it's, it's one students like to talk about. Okay, let's just suck that ball in. Okay, there, it's, it's a good concept, but it has its limitations. Okay, you need a vacuum to generate it, you use cups to grab it, uh, it's simple. Okay, it can require precise placement, so your driver has to be pretty good. Uh, uh, not, it's hard to control the force, uh, subject to damage and suction, so it hits you, that you lose the suction. Okay, it has a tendency to fall. So not many people use that one. Okay, brake way to hold a, a soccer ball in place before you kick it. That was, was used for quite a bit for that. Roller grips, again, probably the most common. Okay, allows for misaligning when grabbing, so your driver doesn't be, have to be quite as accurate. Uh, it won't let go as, as easily because it's moving it in. Okay, you can have it keep going. Uh, extends objects while releasing. Okay, so you let it go and it makes it go farther out so you can shoot something with it. Okay, it's a fairly simple mechanism. You've done wheels before with your drivetrain, so it's very sim similar. Uh, you can use sensors to detect position, such as light sensors, to see where it is. Uh, many variations, mixed rollers and conveyors, uh, reverse top and bottom, we'll, we'll go over those in a second. Okay, if you want, let's say, both rollers to go in, okay, you may have to cross your belt to uh, change the axis if you want to run it on one motor. Or you could do two separate motors, then you don't have to worry about that. But then it weighs more. So, by just crossing either belts, or it's kind of hard to change a, a chain, do that with a chain though. Okay. Uh, gripper designs, uh, how you hang on, okay, high friction surfaces. So some materials you can use if you want to have more grip is uh, neoprene rubber, rubber, silicon, sandpaper. I guess it's okay except for it falls off after a while. Okay, but you cannot damage the game pieces, as you well know. Uh, force is highest at the grip point, uh, two to four times uh, the object weight. Uh, if you're driving forward and you want to pick up these balls this year, okay, do you want the, the roller to be slow or pretty fast? Fast. You want it to move quickly. Okay. If it's slow, it's just going to probably push it right back off. Okay. So wide capture window, quickness counts, uh, quick to grab, drop, and regrab. Okay. Make it easy to control with limit switches, auto functions, intuitive drive controls. Okay. Uh, gathering, accumulators and conveyors. Okay. Uh, horizontal ro rollers, uh, vertical rollers, wheels. I'm going to show, get in a little more details on this. Okay, these are some alliances I think that won this year. Uh, one, this is probably for the rebound rumble, rumble one with the uh, basketball. Okay, where they're picking them up, multiple quantities similar to this year. And that's another thing. You, 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 if you look back in the, the different years, like for picking up these balls off the ground, you can go back and look at pictures of other teams that have done it and, you know, with some kind of belting material and try it out and see how well it works. Okay, with conveyors, uh, there's different ways of doing it. You can have one, one conveyor on top. 
Okay, these will roll. Of course, they touch each other sometimes and you can get slowed down a little bit, depending how fast your roller is. Uh, you know, you want them to roll so there's, so there's some space if possible. And probably if you have the weight, a better way of doing it is by having two of them making it go forward. You get more force to push them forward. Okay, conveyor examples. Okay, uh, this year some people are using, you know, some kind of tower. Okay, you could bring your balls up or down with some kind of helical one. That way the balls aren't going to, you're going to get three or four balls next to each other to jam. Okay, uh, you can have multiple rollers on it to get a lot of different balls. Okay, and you can have a single one up a uh, tube. You know, especially if you only are allowed three balls or so, okay, which is the case with a basketball year. Okay, so f one of the limitations of keeping you so you don't get the ball jams is that you can't get as many balls. Okay, accumulators, uh, conveyor designs. Okay, controls the objects, avoid gravity feed if possible. Uh, it's easier to jam. You, it's nice to have a little force to keep moving it. Uh, direct to flow, reduce random mov movement if possible. Well, sometimes people are using uh, agitators, okay, to keep the balls fairly random so they so they don't get they don't jam up. Okay, keep them moving. Not all game objects are created equal, as you found out with these balls. They're not all the same. <laughs> so you've got to design your robot to your robot to pick up things that maybe. You know, sixteenth of an inch or a half inch off, or after after the competition's been going for halfway, and things are softer. Okay, you can still shoot like normal. Bless you. Okay, shooters. Okay, secure shooting structure. Uh, more accuracy. You can see this one. I think has a. Now, I've seen some, some of the robots here, they've had some turrets. Now, what's the advantage of having a turret, which is basically kind of a lazy Susan on top to make it so you can rotate your, your shooter? Okay, if, in other words, that makes it so if you're right here, you can, you don't have to, your whole robot doesn't have to turn, okay? You can just push a button to make it turn, and because some people will turn better than those. Or if somebody's pushing you, okay, to make it so you can't do it, your turret can still turn and, and get on your object that you're trying for and still shoot and hopefully make it. Okay, but it is a little more complicated to try to design it. Uh, sensors detect ball presence and shot direction. Okay, the Frisbee fling was in interesting. The team I was with, 314, uh, we had a had one that could sh shoot, the, fling the, uh, we had a couple wheels that would it hit against the uh, wall basically, it, uh, it was on a circle, and the Frisbee got some uh, spin, and it went all the way across the field. We could, from the player station, we were able to, to grab it, shoot, grab it, shoot, grab it, shoot, grab it, shoot, and we were able to get about 100, you know, about, well, I forgot what the point scores was, around 114 points just by staying there, until someone decided to stop, stop us. But uh, then we had to go forward and, and shoot. Okay, so that's kind of, whoops. This, so it's, it was similar to something like this, where the, you'd pick up the uh, Frisbee and then put a spin on it to make it go out and bring it out with spin. Uh, this year you should be familiar with this. Okay, winches. Okay, many use. Hanging robots. Well, we're doing that this year. First seems to like to hang robots. Okay. Uh, climbing robots. Okay, we had a big tower. Okay, this is kind of like a monkey bar here, or a playground equipment, and you had to grab it and go up one and up another and keep on going up. Okay, and we had, there were some robots that year that would go up all the way. It was almost like I forgot eight feet or ten feet, whatever it was, and a couple times they fell, <laughs> and that was. You gotta make it so it doesn't fall because that can be disastrous from a high high place. And people's gyms didn't like it either when that happened. Okay. Uh, winch designs. 
Okay, so we have a motor here, and either with chain or sprocket or belt, moving a uh, axis here, and the uh, some kind of cable going around, and lifts everything up as it's turning. Okay, or as a lot of people did, they put a basically a uh, hex hex bar, and they put a motor in the end of that, and they grab their rope and they put Velcro or a loop, you know, something like that, and it catches it, and then it starts to roll up, and then as it rolls up, it brings your, your robot up, which is two major ways people have been doing it. I've seen a couple other unique ways, too, which I, which I enjoyed looking at. Okay. And, of course, I forgot the ratchet part. You don't want it to fall, either. So you put some kind of ratchet or something to make it so it doesn't fall backwards. Okay, what time is it? Okay, so we've got about 15 minutes. Okay, and for the people who are here uh, that came later, I do have my uh, my card here, so if you want a copy of this, you can email me, and I'll, I'll give you a copy of the presentation. Okay. Uh, kickers and catapults. Okay, sudden release of power. Okay, use stored energy, springs and bungees, pneumatics, uh, design and test good latch mechanisms, so when you're pulling it back, Okay, that it doesn't release. Okay, so that's often the trick. Uh, secure lock for safety. So when it does release, we had year we did the soccer game. Uh, we had a pneumatic soccer where it went back, and unfortunately, someone was standing right in front of it. It got it, it the, somehow it got released, and someone hurt their leg because <laughs> they were standing right in front of it. So you do have to be careful about these things. Uh, once a game deploys. Uh, there's a year we had a little mini bot, a little F FTC small robot. They originally thought it was going to be big, but everyone made it as small as possible to go up the pole as fast as possible. Uh, so you got to deploy those things. Okay. Uh, latches. Okay. Hook and hold and grab goals. So there's a picture of a latch. There's there's many kinds of latches. Okay. You can have a spring that makes it so it can they can hold it. Uh, stores power until needed. Uh, springs and bungees help usually. Uh, okay, hooks, locking wheels, pins. Okay, there's. I have some more details on latches and a little appendix I have in the back to explain it better. Okay, again, design and safety. Okay, so what you, some summary of some of these uh, of what I've been talking about. Uh, you want to look around, see what works. You know, do your research. Uh, before you do that, though, okay, I, I, I'm sure most teams do that. You should have brainstorming. Okay, some of your kids have never never done this before. You may come up with a crazy idea, and someone else that does know what they're talking about uh, thinks about it and says, "Yeah, we could do this this way and still accomplish the same thing." And no one's ever done it that way, and it, you know maybe this will work, you know, better. So if you you probably want to do some brainstorming in the beginning, and come up with some crazy ideas. Sometimes there are some really good ideas. Uh, don't you know? Don't put some something like oh the we want the uh, robot to fly or something. <laughs> okay, something crazy. I mean, so, oh, you know, w we have some limitations. Okay. Uh, know your design objects and game strategy. Stay within your capabilities. Design before you build. Uh, keep it simple and make it well. Test under many conditions and have fun, of course. The best part. Okay, I had that up earlier, but Bruce was supposed to be here, but I think his team is competing right now, <laughs> so he could not make it. Okay. And there's some other things here. Okay, there's appendix which you can uh, get some more information. Any questions? This is a majority of what I wanted to talk about today. I went a, went a little fast, probably a little faster than I needed to. Yes? Uh, basically, a potentiometer is going to, there's a little, it's, it's usually a little finger that rotates. And when it, when it, does, when it rotates, it usually, it can, the, the signal from, uh, from the elect electrical uh, signal is going to give you an idea of what the angle is as it, it's rotating. So basically, it's going to tell you the, what it's used for, which is probably the important thing, is to find out the angle. Like if you have an arm, 
and you want to go up 30 degrees or 70 degrees, the potentiometer is probably what you want to, want to use. I mean, you could use an encoder too, because that would give you a distance, but that, the, the potentiometer is more designed for angles. Okay? Any other questions? Yes. Okay, sure, I'll go over that a little bit more. Uh, usually gear ratio, okay, so if we have a, let's say, uh, for lift up of your uh, robot, most people are using 30 to one or 40 to one or 50 to one. What does that really mean? Okay, so we've got some, some teeth here, so one wheel will rotate, okay, and that will change the, the uh, diameter. Yes, if people want to leave your watch too. You will not bend. <laughs> okay, so you have a, so that what, it, what it really, the, the important thing part, part of it is if you want to lift something that's heavy, okay, you have on your motor that has a small gears, okay, let's say a 12 tooth gear, and you have on your, on what you want, it's going to be connected with gears or sprockets or chains or belts or something, you go to something bigger. Okay, that allows you more force is what the end result of that is. Okay, but it's gonna go slow. You can't get something for nothing. Okay, you get more power to lift, lift something up or to move something forward, but you're gonna lose the, uh, you're gonna slow down. So let's say for your drive trains this year, most people want to be fast, okay? So they, they, they geared it so that it was, it was actually lower on the uh, gear, gear ratio, okay? But they put, used more motors. So they continue getting the force too. So if you start lowering it to get speed, you better have your, your motors better be strong. Okay, either 775 or a sim or something. Okay, to get some strength behind it. And again, it's, it's basically the radius is changing. Like when you're when you're ra wrapping the rope around it, you get the same effect by changing the uh, radius. Okay, because the teeth the teeth are proportional to the, the radius it, it's going to be going around. Will that help you on that? Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, yeah. um, is there a way to uh, put less strain on a motor that's trying to operate a lift or a, uh, a winch? Uh, one is to reduce friction. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's probably the key thing. If you don't want to do anything else, okay, try to figure out where you're having all the friction and try to reduce that. Okay, make, make the surface slipperier or making sure your gears are meshed properly. Uh, and sometimes, sometimes it's a motor that's not working. Let's say on your, on your drivetrain, uh, you're finding out you're, you're turning just a little bit and you have a little more control, and you've got t you know, two motors, maybe one of the motors isn't working. Okay, and that, that'll, that'll affect a lot, and you'll brown out a lot, because it's going to cause the other ones to work harder. Uh, you can add other, uh, other motors to, to make it work better. Uh, if you have one 775 motor on one side, actually you could put another one on the other side. Just have to have you have to reverse the directions as well, so they work. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, now, uh, if anybody wants to leave, you want to talk to me individually. You're welcome to. Again, if you want to get a copy of the presentation, okay, I will email it to you. Uh, this will, you're welcome to go. I am for Kettering. Thank you. If you have any questions about Kettering University, it's in Michigan, it's an engineering college.